14 laps of Asia Talent Cup madness await us right here in Qatar. The man with the red flag at the start of the grid heads off and then the red lights will come on. Revs will go up, nerves will start to peak. Adrenaline pumping through their veins and the lights go out now and off they go. Another superb start from Furisato there. That strong left leg taking him off well and truly out front of these guys. Keep a long, an eye on the yellow helmet of the number eight. That was yesterday's race winner, Hamada. But it's Voigt who is in second place. But will Hamada go around the outside like he did yesterday? Not quite this time. So Voigt has learned something at least he just needs to make it past turn six and turn ten although Hamada round the outside now at turn two excellent stuff on the chase down now of Ferrisato you cannot let get let him get away you can't get involved in all sorts of melees round there because he will take off and clear off and good night and goodbye yeah absolutely you can see a bit of a wobble there for Hamada obviously pushing pretty hard to get back onto the tail of Ferrisato in the early stages which is like you said exactly where he needs to be you do not need to give the guy any space to be able to start putting in his own laps and uh, get yourself caught up in traffic so to speak although I don't like that term for guys who are almost as fast and certainly trying just as hard but uh, yeah so Hamada in the position he wants to be in now but Harrison Voigt then so far doing a bit of a better job than yesterday after that early disaster for him and uh, yeah good start for him because he really bogged down off the line yesterday so race two off to a much more solid uh, start touching wood touching my head he's made it through <laughs> turn six which is the problem area for him yesterday and these two at the front have not quite cleared off just yet you've got Furisata out front from Hamada then from Asman and Voigt uh, in positions three and four I couldn't quite see who was just behind them uh, Voigt 18 Asman 13 Oh, no, I couldn't quite see that still camera couldn't see it there. either. <laughs> but uh, but it, they are still well in contention. I think but it these might be laps, Mie. Ah, it could well be then, yes. I think, uh, the according to the timing screens, Mie. yeah, possibly. Perfect then. Apologies if we're not saying that quite correctly. There he is. It is, yes, OK. I thought it was a single digit, but then the eight is already in second, so there we go. Yeah, we managed to spot him, such as the commentator's issues when you're uh, looking at all these bikes that are the same colour and quite often fairly similar helmet designs as well. Yep, exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, but anyway, Anyways, they are coming on to the start and finish straight for the first time and the top two are well within slipstreaming effect zone for the front from the front runners. So it doesn't look like they're going to be able to get away just yet as we, we clock down to 13 laps to go. Voigt pulls out to the inside. Is he going to make a daring move up the inside? We saw how strong Furisato was on the brakes. He continues that today. Nobody able to go up his inside this time around. But how close are they going to be through turn two? We saw how good Hamada was there last time around. We did, yeah. So it looked like Voigt was a bit tempted to try and make a move there. Probably also very, very conscious of the likely pace of the guys ahead of him. But nothing too much so far to be seen in this fight at the front all nice and calm early doors but yeah that slipstream certainly is helpful if those guys can stay in range of that that will help them to just stay tagged onto the back of the two who were you know just that little margin quicker yesterday young harrison's got a bit of a twitchy front wheel hasn't he i'm keeping my fingers crossed for him that he has a good race that's for sure i feel but, like uh, that's a riskier comment to make than <laughs> Hopefully it has the opposite effect and uh, no commentators cursing keeps it upright. So we have a, a leading quintet for all oh, this. Someone who's gone off way wide out there, but they've managed to stay on. Got to be careful because it's ultra dusty when you go off the circuit. And these slick tyres, well, they're not sand tyres, so they don't really pull up very well when that sort of dirt out there. No, there is dune buggy racing in Qatar, but not quite here at LaSalle International in Circuit, at least not on the... Uh, not on the grey bits. Maybe just outside. But, uh... <laughs> but yeah, so I think, I'm not sure who went wide in the background. I think it was a 20 or a 22. So it could be Sheryl or Hongo that uh, just got that wrong there. We'll have to see if they've uh, slotted back in. Something uh, we've not mentioned so far this race uh, for, our, for our Turkish fans watching in. Sadiji is actually competing today. So there are 13 riders on the grid. He missed out yesterday due to a sprained ankle, I, I believe I think it was, it was sprained ankle or foot. Yeah, it was from a crash that he had and uh, just not quite feeling up to it yesterday for race one. So, uh, yeah, good to see him able to compete today. If nothing else, just for the track time and the extra experience around this LaSalle International Circuit. Well, it's a leading quintet, which is very good news for our viewers at home. Not such good news for the guys who were hoping to have a relatively quiet race as battling one another for Asato and Hamada. They have well and truly got a lot of company right behind them. We saw earlier on Harrison Voigt taking a quick look behind him to check who's there. He's probably still happy that he's still in contention here at the moment. And he's uh, pulling out the slipstream, pulling towards the side of the track. But so is Mie as well. Is anybody going to make a move up the inside? Who's going to blink first? For Asato. He's so late on the brakes. And Mie as well. Great 
great stuff from him up the inside of Voigt there. Superb. Yeah, that got him a little bit close there, didn't it? I'm sure the camera angle doesn't really help and there's a little bit more space. Voigt battling but, uh, back. Yeah, he's need to be careful now. These guys do not want to give free time to the guys ahead of them. But uh, yeah, you can see that slipstream effect. They get really, really close. I'm sure if this were the final lap of the race, that at least Mia and Voigt would have been able to really... Uh, Whack one up the inside Ooh, there and try and make it stick. He has gone up the inside this time. Voigt again. So, yeah, they've got to be careful. But Mie, the fastest lap last time around. These guys have clearly learned quite uh, quite a lot because these low 212s is the same sort of pace that the front runners, Hamada and Furusato, were running yesterday. So what we said during yesterday's race about these guys learning for race two, they've clearly managed to uh, kick it up a gear. Yep, so far so good in this race for those guys who just got dropped off yesterday. And, yeah, it is a great five-way fight at the moment. But like we said, they do need to be a little bit careful. So I have no doubt that Furusato and Hamada are probably still the two favourites to be really fighting this out at the end of the race. But uh, at the moment as well, Ooh, oh, look yeah, at the asthma. I was, oh, thought that might be a little bit of a uh, dive bomb there, but no, uh, no harm done. But uh, yeah, the guys at the front look really, really solid still and haven't been that bothered by the guys just behind them. So uh, they will just need to be conscious that they're playing a sensible game. They know they don't need to lose time at this stage. So those on the chase need to do the same. Oh. But there's another three-way fight here then. Wakamatsu uh, looking, uh, getting someone up his inside there almost. He's the one in the middle of, uh, of the pack there. That's number 12 as well, Max Gibbons, the Australian. Number 12 out front there and just behind them as well. You've got Igarashi, the number 14. And Igarashi will move up the inside perhaps not quite this time though not quite this time i'm a little surprised to see igarashi down there he did complete the top five yesterday and he's the man who of the returning riders had the best results in qatar last year but uh, i wouldn't be surprised to see him maybe able to fight these guys off and then start making a little bit of progress <laughs> forward as the race goes on that is the but, universal uh, sign for follow me but i accept that you're probably not going to <laughs> exactly the moto 3 special mm, well look at that as man's the man on the move he was the fastest rider that time of the round fastest lap of the race at 2 minute 12 0 1 6 a very good pace here and we, but we did see the pace drop off fairly significantly towards the end of the race dropping into the 213s to see it'll be interesting to see how that one pans out whether they whether that was be due to tire wear or tiredness or whatever it was yesterday or maybe just because the groups settled into fairly well distinct parties and everyone just <laughs> were able to slow down the pace to just try and battle it out for the accepting the positions that they were probably going to get absolutely yes so uh, Asman yesterday, yeah, he had fairly similar pace, didn't he, in the latter part of the race, uh, certainly those last few laps. But the, uh, yeah, number 15, number 8 were uh, those superstar 211 runners in the middle and really managed to make that work for them and pull away to make it a two-man fight. Unfortunately, Sadiji has entered the pitch. I'm guessing that that was uh, riding a bit, a bit too much pain there is the Turk. So that's a shame for him. Yeah, a bit of a shame to see that. But, you know, hopefully now he'll be able to uh, get back to uh, fully fit now there's a little bit of a break with obviously the Asia Talent Cup calendar having the same change as the MotoGP calendar at the moment and Bury Ram pushed back to later in the year. But uh, this group at the front then, I'm quite impressed at the way they've managed to stay with them so far. Me too. Very, very impressed. It's, uh, it's, it's a big ask to basically improve your lap time by a second, given that you've had no uh, actual uh, time on track between yesterday's race and today as well. That's... Uh, that's very, very impressive from these guys. It very much is. You can see Asman there, a little bit wide, I think, in the background, just a little touch on the green stuff there. But Voigt certainly is absolutely part of a lead trio now. There's a little bit more daylight between Mia and Asman just behind them. But I'm fairly sure that the slipstream, especially with three bikes punching a hole in the air ahead of them, will mean that this will be a five rider fight once again into turn one. Judging by Asman's moves up the inside there, you wonder whether he's thinking that Mia is slowing him up. He's getting a bit concerned about how the guys ahead of them are seemingly getting away. But look at the massive punch that there will be in the air for both of them allowed to be slipstreaming through as they almost touch handlebars and elbows down the home straight. Voigt going all over the place. Where's he going to go? Inside, outside. He's chosen inside, but still no chance of going up the inside of Furusato, as you rightly point out, Fran. Two 11s there are across the board from those guys. All the top five set two 11s. They are setting a pace above the rest. Conditions clearly optimal. Yeah, absolutely. I was amazed then when not just one or two of them, but five two 11s in a row from that front group. Really impressive stuff. The fastest one was Voigt, as came up on your screen. But uh, here's a bit of a replay then. Wow. 
Look I love that. the slow-mo as everyone pops up. Yeah. <laughs> and you can see pretty much who decides on the braking markers as well, although the real telltale sign is who grabs the front brake with their right hand first, because just because they're sitting up, as I know from a couple of senior Moto3 riders, doesn't mean they're necessarily braking. That's a little bit of mind games going on. I know who you're talking about there, and it's a, <laughs> an interesting party to watch, isn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so it was Furusato still maintaining the lead, and something else I'm surprised about, Fran, breaking down into turn one. Furusato has been so strong all of yesterday and still today Day. Nobody dares try and match his braking marker, though, do they? Yeah, it's an interesting one. He does seem certainly the strongest of these five in the entry into Turn 1, although Hamada seems to be able to get around the apex a little bit quicker, carry a little bit more speed. Uh, but obviously, that's not so useful if you've got a bike in front of you in the way, much like the old uh, inline four versus V4 argument. You know, you get swings and roundabouts in these situations. But I'm sure that later in the race, a few of them would have been able to make that move and attack him by now, if nothing else, because, you know, the time is then, isn't it, when you're on the final lap. But, yeah, so far, he's still just so solid there, and it is a bit of a problem. But I'm sure he's also learnt a lot from yesterday in the final corner and losing out there. Yep. So he'll be an interesting one to watch, I think, on the final lap with Furusato, because at the moment, it's as you were from yesterday, and his tactics are identical, which are just lead the way. Well, without being too much of a Sherlock Holmes and stating the absolute obvious, obviously the race finishes before the first corner, so at least his supreme <laughs> it braking <does> indeed. <laughs> prowess uh, won't have a real impact on who uh, who takes the victory of the race. But this sort of antics will. Who will get the slipstream? Well, it's Hamada that time who crosses the finish line first. But this will be fascinating because Will Ferrisato pull out and go up the inside again. Not quite this time. He decides to stick behind him. Interesting because we've not seen that before. Every other time yesterday, well, Hamada pulled out of the slipstream in front of Furusato. He went straight back into turn one. Yeah, he did indeed. But I'm sure now they're very aware that it's a five rider fight and it's still a five rider fight. It's not like they've had a, a real little duel at the front and allowed anyone to catch them. Those guys are there purely on merit and having the same pace as the two who dueled it out yesterday. So it's impressive stuff. But yeah, it is pretty interesting, isn't it? And Hamada, of course, yesterday as well was pretty reticent in uh, getting past Furusato when he did seem to have the opportunity to do so on that main straight. But today, strikes quite early. Oh, and Mie up the inside of Harrison Voigt. He was nearly losing the front end. They've got to be very careful, Fran. I was about to give you a certificate because whatever word you used back there, that's got to be the first time that's been used on an Asia Talent Cup broadcast, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Reticent? <laughs> yes, that one. Okay. <laughs> As uh, we turn back to the action, Hamada still maintains the lead. Voigt still fairly secure in that third place. Now, we're coming up to turn 10. Last time around, Voigt just seemed to make a bit of a mistake as for Rosato because they up the inside but for how long Hamada might have the jump in him on the drive he's in the slipstream full gas through turn 11 and uh, Voigt didn't make much of a mistake that time around because he's maintained that gap to the two leaders. Yeah, he has. So already then a bit of spice. Yesterday it was six to go or five to go when they really started dicing each other a bit more. But today already a little bit more action in this front group. And now it's the lead two who were uh, getting into it a bit more. Whereas earlier we were a little bit worried that those three just on their tail were going to lose themselves a bit of time. But no, absolutely not so far. But it's Furusato then back in the driving seat, so to speak. And uh, he does seem very comfortable there in the lead of the race. Certainly for a rookie, it's impressive uh, holding of his nerve. He absolutely loves it, doesn't he? And you love to see it. A uh, rider very comfortable out front, and I've got to say, as exhilarating as yesterday's race was, with this epic duel between the two men on your screen right now, Ferrisato and Hamada. It's great having a, a, a race with five of them as we see the three of them just pull out the slipstream behind them. That was a fantastic onboard shot. Looking back from Frivisato. Who's going up the inside? It looks like Gumbie trying to punt back. Voigt, he's the loser in that situation. He's been bumped back to fifth and now it's finding Asman in third place. But for how long? Mie looking up the inside again, not quite close enough this time. That was a great shot, wasn't it? That's why oh. I love that onboard camera. It's just great. You can see them all shuffling and there's the breaking zone comes and they'll suddenly get a bit bigger is that concertina effect as well. But uh, yeah, Furusato then once again able to keep the lead of this race. And those three getting a little bit dicey just behind. But yeah, it was Voigt that really lost out there. Shuffle back to fifth now when he's traditionally been the man fighting these two at the front. So uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see. Mie certainly seems 
pretty eager to make a few moves as well. And uh, he, of course, was the rookie who came out on top in the duel to the line yesterday against Igarashi. So uh, certainly got some last lap chops, but uh, it's still quite early. We've got eight to go. I know we're only halfway or so through the race, and I'm absolutely exhausted already. Water is running low because we're talking and raising our voices so much from the excitement on our screens. It's fairly standard behaviour from the Asia Talent Cup, to be quite honest with you. It'll be shame to have a bigger break than uh, we were expecting, to be honest. Voigt up the inside, but not quite. He's, they've got to be so careful charging up the inside there because turn 10 although it is banked and you can really throw it in there it's all too easy to lose the front end yeah exactly and i think voyovi is an interesting one as well because obviously he really cannot afford to give away a big chunk of points again like we said it was a good recovery ride yesterday got a few points in his pocket and managed to get back on and uh, didn't waste too much time getting too angry at himself just straight back on the bike okay head down right now we've got to try and make the most of it but uh, certainly if he wants to challenge for the asia talent cup title this season you need to try and be consistent and uh, certainly fifth is much better than uh, throwing it down the road completely agree I'm sure he yeah. won't settle for fifth in any way none of them will that's why no. we love them yeah but quite. still <laughs> you do need to uh, balance these things out at times and certainly with uh, now as it will be seven laps to go in a minute you don't want to be uh, making too many crazy moves and certainly look at this in terms of crazy moves as man's pulled up from the slipstream he wants that lead and look at oh hamada cuts across him there nearly wipes his front wheel away who's gonna break latest into turn one from Asato at the inside of Asma not quite he chops his the nose off and coming out of that one into turn two it's Hamada that leads again that was wow pretty much too close to call to be honest with you but uh, they're all safely through still this top five it's very fast close but clean <coughs> racing that we've got here today yeah definitely very clean so far you can see every time I get stressed I seem to do a weird lasso thing with these new handheld mics that we have because uh, it's too much to take but uh, for Asato then looking again like he wants to attack back but Hamada was super solid there no fear back in the lead of the race and we still got two 11s uh, for this group it was only Voigt oh. then that just missed out on it that time around they did dip out of the 211s uh, for a couple of laps there but now back into them which is uh, fascinating uh, maybe i do think perhaps yesterday the pace has slowed a little bit not through uh, conditions or deteriorating tires but through just we're in our own battles and that's all we have to focus on right now whereas this you've got to be as fast as possible yeah absolutely and uh, i'm sure well I don't know, I was going to say that, but now I'm going to take it back. I was going to say, <laughs> I'm sure that Furusato and Hamado are aware they've probably got a little bit more in their pocket, maybe. A little bit more longevity, a little bit more experience of this kind of pace over the number of laps that they've done. But I'm very impressed with these guys who, like we said, took such a big step forward from yesterday. And uh, Asman, especially last time around, was uh, really up on his best pace yesterday. And it's not just these uh, top five that we're looking at who have got a, a pretty big race on because behind them, the gaps are fairly short as well. There's a small gap, uh, bit, well, it's Ig Gibbons, Igarashi and Wakamatsu who are still running around as a trio. Behind them, you've got uh, Sharil, who's four seconds back, who's in his own group with Thompson, Sully and Hongo as well. Yeah, they're all very, very close again, those guys. It looks like they're going to have a... Ooh, the inside! It goes for Asada, but not quite. That is an interesting one because we don't see those sorts of moves at the final turn in the Age of Talent Cup because it's all about this run to the line. Exactly, yeah. So uh, apologies if I just broke anyone's headphones there, if you're listening on them. <laughs> but yeah, that was a pretty interesting uh, attempt, wasn't it? But for Asata then now, he does make it a stick and he's back in the lead of this race and Hamada looks like he'll hang on for a second. Again, you can see such a difference in their riding styles. It's really great to see. It's a line choice as well, particularly on the start and finish straight there for Asata trying to keep out of harm's way uh, keeping well out of the slip streaming zone there he knew he wouldn't be too far behind that he couldn't outbreak them all so he did he maintains that first position turns four and five are kind of tricky ones here because it's a bit of a double apex and for Asato he is just so strong on the brakes it's just a uh, but then Hamada by contrast is so good on the exit of corners and maintaining that corner speed just a beautiful difference in riding stars between the two of them both so different but maintaining such a similar pace yeah I absolutely love that it's like we saw yesterday in qualifying in Moto 2, Marini and Roberts, exactly the same lap time, which just seems crazy from two completely different riders. But uh, it is amazing and it's great to see when you've got such a great example of it. These two guys, yeah, it's like they're doing a different task, really, isn't it? Everything's different, body language, position on the bike, the way they're attacking everything. But yeah, 
lap times within hundredths. But the result, pretty much the same. Six laps, well, five and a half laps to go more like here. And Asman maintaining that third position. So this, apart from the two uh, two fellows who have joined the group, this is the, the running order pretty much of yesterday's race throughout until they reach the chequered flag. And just absolute props to the likes of Voigt and Mie who have managed to up their pace significantly, as well as Asman, mind you, to cling on to the back of your leaders. Yeah, definitely. You can see there's a little bit more of a gap than we've seen over the last few laps now between Asman and Voigt as it is now in fourth. But I'm fairly confident that will disappear again once we get another slipstream. Like we said, when there's three guys ahead of you, that's a much bigger hole in the air that's going to get punched for you to be able to uh, profit from it. Yeah, quite right. It's uh, one one thing to have one rider in front of you to get the slipstream on. It's another had to have four in front of you as well. And look at and the all difference fanning out across there. the track as well. Quite, <laughs> absolutely. Well, here is that slipstream effect in full view of the cameras. Hamada pulling out and going past for Rosato. But for how long? And is the Asman closing in indefinitely as well? Oh, very, very close indeed. As Hamada cuts across for Rosato as they go over the line. Versus Asman taking the inside. He's up the inside of Rosato, but Mie going even further further inside, up the inside of Voigt as well, and they are all together again. No more gaps this time around, so they can be confident that if the, the, the two at the back of this group lose a bit of time around the lap, they can make it up on the start and finish straight. Yeah, most definitely. And you can see there as well, Hamado was ahead before the start finish line, just as we saw him do a few times before crunch time yesterday. And uh, I'm sure Furusato will uh, try and bear that in mind again at the uh, end of this race. It's the furthest back. We've seen Furusato back into third place there, sitting quite comfortably. Genuinely is on all Asman. season. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All decade, even. Oh, wow. How, how often can you say that about a 14-year-old? Uh, or is he 13 for a start? So he is 14, yes, yeah. of course. Hamada is 15 years old. So let's get a look at uh, what is this? Going into turn one, is it? I think it's the great turn one shuffle. That oh, and as he close. takes a look behind him. Yeah. I'm not sure I'd be doing that there if I, if I was... Um... It's not something I understand all that much, to be honest. If you know you're in a group of five and you were a few seconds ago, it's, chances are it's not changed that much. Unless you wipe someone but, out, uh, of course. Last well. time around, they were all <laughs> Optimism. in the... Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the last time around, they were all in the 2.11s. Once again, the fastest man, though, was Voigt, actually, that time around. 2.11.726. So he is definitely... I would say they're all men on the move, really, to be honest with you. <laughs> all of the top five. That was going to be completely void comment there. But Voigt at the moment, just about at the back of this group, Hamada leading the way from Asman. Yeah, he is indeed. And it's now Igarashi in the in the lead of that battle that he's having against Max Gibbons for sixth. Ray Wakamatsu's just uh, dropped off them a little bit, now in a solid eighth. But that battle just behind is still uh, four guys strong and they're all still uh, raging for that top nine yeah. they want that top ten finish don't they for Rosato on the inside again of Asman as they come onto the start and finish straight another time as they come across the finish line this time around it will be four laps to go and that was an interesting move from for Rosato, but will he make it across the line with them we're lacking that drive by cutting up the inside no he won't should this be the final lap Exactly. Should this be the final lap? No, he won't. But I imagine he's going to have a good crack at outbreaking them Blimey, into turn one who's now. Who's going to take the inside line? I mean, they won. Oh, it's so close at the inside, chopping each other's noses off. As close as you like. That's experience for you there, learning your racecraft and just general safety limits. <laughs> and spatial awareness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you could see there, Furusato obviously confident to make that move, maybe lose a little bit on the straight to what he would have done. But uh, knowing that he has the ability to outbreak them into turn one. I couldn't even focus on who actually got the lead then. It was a complete surprise to see from a side drive fan. I was too busy focusing on front wheels potentially touching rear wheels. And thank goodness that they didn't. Yeah, thank goodness that they didn't. It was some good skill there, managing to shuffle all five people around in about a metre of space. <sighs> Heart rate's going yet again. Thanks a lot, Asia Talent Cup. Already did the cardio workout today. Didn't need another one. Thank you very much. Wet towels, please, bringing to the commentary box. Hamada up the inside again. He knows he can't let Ferrisato get away. Yeah, no, they absolutely can't. It does seem to have turned the wick up a little bit. Just a couple of bike lengths of daylight there. But I'm sure Hamada especially will be the man to respond very quickly. And yet you can already see just closing back in on the rear wheel of the number 15. And it's Asma once again now in third. And these three guys do look very, very solid. You can see just a little bit more daylight to the other guys just trying to hang on to them. And you wonder, given the lack of experience some of the other guys have, maybe a moment like that into turn one where it does a bit get a bit too close for comfort. Does that scare them a little bit? You still hear of that sort of thing of rookies in the Moto3 Senior World Championship battling with some more senior guys who are more comfortable racing at that sort of spatial 
distant uh, that even the, some of the rookies there get a bit intimidated by it. Who was it that told us the other day of their experience when they'd done their first wild card in the championship? And then Tom someone, Lutie. Ah, it was Tom Lutie, yes, it was indeed. Uh, and then someone came past him absolutely full pelt in his first wild card. And he couldn't and believe he how fast they were. And that's how fast you can actually get. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure everyone, especially at these earlier stages in your career, would have had a moment like that where it's like, wow. Yeah. And, uh, but these guys at the moment doing a real good job to hang on to the two who duelled it out yesterday. Well, and they just uh, got a big uh, whiff of how close you can really absolutely. race. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And it was still nice and clean as well. It's great action. It's what we love about the ATC. It's always such a close race, even if it's a duel or a big group fight or whatever it may be. It's pretty much guaranteed classic. Absolutely. Three laps to go now. Harrison Voigt just waving to Gamie just behind him there, perhaps to say apologies for a lap before whilst he's finally uh, got his bearings back on <laughs> I it. I like the word waving, like it's just like, hello. Well, I think he did, actually. He just <laughs> waved his hand there, but he wasn't sort of waving it in an aggressive manner. We'll have to ask him later on, won't we? But uh, still, the quintet thunders on and Furusato and Hamada just like yesterday positions one and two Asman in third behind him but the other factors there as Voigt going up the inside of Asman not quite getting a bit squirrely on the brakes but that's exactly what happened at turn six on lap one yesterday apart from that time he managed to keep it up right he did indeed so I'm sure that will actually strangely work in favor of his confidence he's managed to have a little bit of a little bit of a squiggle as we say not sure it's a word that really exists in the outside world uh, but uh, yeah kept it up right looked pretty tempted to try and whack it up the inside but now is not the time for that not just yet not just yet turn 10 and then full throttle as we come through turn 11 as well keep it as banked over as little as possible to keep it on the fatter part of the tire to get as much drive as possible of course and then we're going into this triple right hander now and you could just see it is that middle part of the circuit where the front three do have a little bit of an advantage over both Voigt and Mie but they never seem to get far enough away so that those two can't close up in the slipstream when we finally get onto the home straight again yeah absolutely that slipstream is working wonders for those guys behind but that's part the tactics of the race as well you know it's good if they know that they just need to keep keep in touching distance and then try and close them in with that slipstream then that's great for them don't have to take as many risks and uh, yeah don't have to go over that line that Harrison Voigt just tiptoed towards there a minute ago on to the home straight we come again and when we cross the finish line it will be the penultimate lap of the second race here at round one and lap progression blimey they are just getting uh, fairly quicker and quicker for us has been on a great run lately but not enough of a run to keep break the slipstream there because Asman going up the inside as is Hamada Hamada wants to try and outbreak his compatriot he's not going to do it this time though he's still so strong there and they are all back together look at that that time around Mie sets the fastest lap of the race the fastest lap we've seen all weekend a two 11 5 4 4 so you can be confident that these guys no, there's no sort of drop off there's no tiring or anything like that they are willing to put it all on the line all the way until the final lap they really are it looked like everyone was at their limit then through turn one and all with a few different strengths and weaknesses but yeah no changes at all that time around so i think it's going to get pretty interesting certainly next time through turn one which will be the last time at racing speed but at the moment then it's still for Asato in the hot seat and i am i am a little bit surprised after he did lose out yesterday that he has again been so eager to be the guy in the lead for much of this race yeah quite right well we've seen a couple of previews of what could happen at the final corner next time around but i think this will be probably the most uh, indicative one in terms of what doesn't happen because will anybody be keeping cars close to their chest will they do a dummy run of what they could next time around who knows how will they catch it up will we <laughs> will we even see one of the top two or three finish will it be the man in fifth place out of the final corner who slips streams a lot of them we just don't know that's the beauty of it but it's one and a half laps to go here in the asia talent cup who it will it be experienced or youthful exuberance who comes out on top here i think it's going to be a good one i'm not quite as nervous as i would be if maybe we were thundering towards the final corner at bury ram for example which is pretty much designed to create drama but i think it's going to get pretty interesting uh, on the final lap here with five of them as well of course there's always going to be so many more configurations of what could happen with a duel you know it's just one-on-one -on -one. but these guys everyone's been looking pretty racy at different times in this race and everyone seems to have different parts of the track where they're maybe a little stronger than those in the group so this is 
can't call it. This is the dress rehearsal then of that final corner. So Furusato maintaining massive corner speed there, but is it enough to keep him over the line? Keep an eye on what Hamada does. Does anybody break their slipstream a little bit? Do they uh, jump out of the bubble to not show their hand? Maybe because Furusato is the one who comes across the finish line that time. Maybe the others do want to show their hand. Voigt to the lead. Voigt to the lead. We have an Australian in the lead in the Asia Talent Cup. Oh, and it gets so close in a turn one. So Voigt's not. You guys are messing around working out who's going to get a better slipstream. I'm going to go past a lot of you. I want to lead this thing and really make amends for yesterday. Absolutely. I thought when earlier on he seemed a little bit, I'm going to say it again, reticent to take over in the lead. I knew if it was the final lap, it's just one of those things that's like, well, I'm going to go to the limit and see what happens. For Asato, really just impressive stuff. Yeah, he's he was, back again. They <laughs> straight the away. Front. He does not want anybody else to lead this race. He is adamant. I am the man who's going to be leading this one. But boy, what a move that was in a turn one. He can take something away from this race, whatever happens now that that was a brilliant piece of racecraft. Yeah, it most definitely was. Oh, a little bit wide there from which of those guys was, was it? in uh, the Mie going it a bit was. wide. So he's just lost out to Asman then, but we've got Furusato then back in the lead, and it does look like Voigt's just having a little bit more trouble to hold on to him than Hamada has throughout the rest of this race. But yeah, that move from the Australian was absolutely great. And uh, now I think we're going to get another one, maybe from the number eight, looking very, very close there. Yeah, and I'm just, I'm trying to guess, Fanny. Hamada goes up the inside of Voigt. Who will be in the better position when they come to start finish straight. Voigt just again, they get a little bit of a twitch. He had such a twitchy front end there. And Asman capitalizes on that. Foo turn 11 now. Now to the triple right-hander. Absolutely side by side then. Ooh, like I said, oh, Asman just almost a up. touch there, almost. But uh, yeah, just couldn't quite keep it in there. But now that we're absolutely five abreast still, who is going to take this race? Well, final sector, here we go. Furusato in the lead. How many times have we said that throughout the last 24 hours or so? Voigt's looking up the inside of Hamada. But will that third place be better for him? Who knows? It's all about this drive towards the final corner. Anybody going to make a move up the inside? Or are they going to go for the slipstream? Hamada looks up the inside. No, he's decided not to make a move there so it is about the run to the line tucking it in as much as you possibly can squeeze every muscle as much as you possibly can do not let any win come out Hamada is it going to get the win again Furusato big loser in that final corner who's going to get the win it's Asman oh Asman's done it he shot them all the Malaysians done it superb win for the 18 year old from Hamada and Voigt finishes on the podium Furusato can take a big lesson away from here in Qatar what a debut that was but what a Finale from Asman. Absolutely. And we've still got these guys, look, still duking it out back in there. Uh, well, it's who's that? Igarashi and the number 12 of Gibbon. So this has gone right to the end again. Ooh, and Igarashi, oh, he just missed out by pretty much the same margin yesterday, did the Japanese rider. Oh, and look but, at this uh, as well. This Blimey. group as well, absolutely thundering onto the line. <laughs> <laughs> the number 22 there. Oh, dear. Uh, That's just, Hongo yes, that Hongo. just missed out. But uh, yeah, some great racing through the field. But that win then for Asman. So he's now won two of the last three races, so which uh, doesn't sound like a bad start, does it? Fran, the answer to the question, experience oath for y over youthful exuberance. Well, experience wins. Experience did win. This is, yeah, I was going to say, this is the first podium of the year with non-rookies, but obviously it's only the second podium, so that stat's not particularly impressive. <laughs> but it does show, absolutely, the three guys on the podium today in this race do have some previous experience. You can see what that's done to the standings as well. As man after looking like he was a yeah a little bit faded yesterday just in that lonely third place is now uh, only four points off the lead absolutely superb and uh, Hamada though yes has really capitalized on that here's the photo finish then excellent stuff all fanned out across the line oh blimey as they cut across each other that's very close. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's but, another photo uh, finish. We'll be getting that email through soon from Tiso. <laughs> that's great stuff. Asman then, obviously, yeah, with that advantage, he was perfectly aware that he'd won it. He did have a little bit of time in hand there by the by the line. But uh, it's also interesting for Asato, he seemed to have been able to get that entry and exit at the final corner just right to still be ahead over the line. But that time around, it just didn't pay off for him at all, did it? 
No, not at all, but you live and you learn. This is his rookie season, his very second race, and he just managed to miss his out on the podium. He will learn for the next time. I'm sure he'll be talking with the crew, and that'll probably be the first thing that gets said back in the garage, uh, to be honest with you. After, of course, a well done, because can't put him down too much, of course. That was a stunning debut performance from him. Yeah, that's a really impressive rookie weekend for him. He's definitely been the standout rookie here. Gunmie has been really impressive as well. Uh, it's not easy to come into the competition and, uh, yeah, have a two solid races as well no big mistakes no big dramas but uh, definitely for Asato I'm sure it will be a little bit frustrated after having taken pole and having missed out yesterday by what was it 0.032 I think yes good to memory. have uh, then just uh, not quite made it on the podium in race two these guys are all so competitive <laughs> so you know like it would annoy me so I can't imagine when it's your profession mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure he will uh, be coming out swinging in round two to try and put that right just saw Asman there getting congratulated by a lot of the Patronus squad of course being Malaysian who have very good relationships with all them does the 18 year old just a bit well technically then two wins and three races for Asman it is indeed, yeah. So he's the man on form at the moment. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what these guys have to say about the difference in pace between yesterday and today. But uh, yeah, Asman definitely right back in that uh, kind of title contenders group. Um, after yesterday, maybe looking like the uh, the Japanese riders just had the jump on him a little bit. Oh. But uh, oh, Harrison Voigt, I'm not sure if that's emotion for being on the podium, frustration for having not won the race. It's yeah. hard to tell what their expectations are going to be. He does have a little bit more experience, but that's definitely his best ATC result by a mile, the young Australian. He made a lot of progress last year, uh, but I think his best was, well, by a mile. His best was the fourth last year at Sepang, but that was a highlight of the season too after he'd started off. You you know, battling for the points, then moving a little bit further forward, then got that fourth position and now on the podium. And I'm sure a lot of it will be relief after having crashed out yesterday as well. I should think so, yes. That was a very difficult race to keep it up right there. You can see also Razlan Razali, the Sepang Racing well, Sepang Circuit CEO and uh, head of the Sepang Racing Basically Team. Basically head of Malaysia. Yeah, boss, <laughs> Malaysia boss. Uh, there go to see one of his uh, his close friends, technically one of his riders, you could probably say, I suppose. <laughs> Pretty cool about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so in this paddock, of course, as well, Patronus, Sepang Racing Team, Team Principal. Oh, I did the thing where I said the two teams in the title, one of my bugbears. But uh, getting some good congratulations then from someone who's been so instrumental in uh, Malaysian motorcycle racing and really making it a big force to be reckoned with on the world stage. So I'm sure that pretty good to have an ally like that with you and a good few words in Park Ferme. And of course, this is where we first see some of the potential Malaysian stars of the future as well, coming through the Asia Talent Cup. So heading behind, out of Park Ferme and towards the podium will the lads and we'll have a different I enjoyed that U-turn with the cameraman. Suddenly stop. <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll be hearing, of course, the Malaysian National Anthem above the podium here in Qatar. In the background there, the dulcet tones of Michael Hill, the circuit announcer this weekend. Final results then. Sierra Fudin Asman takes the win from Kanta Hamada. Harrison Voigt finishes off in third place. Tyo Furisato fourth from Gunmie. Max Gibbons got the better of Igarashi, as you saw there. Ray Wagamatsu, Wagamatsu, I should say, sorry, uh, was fell a little bit behind them as well. Mikhail Sali finishes out the top nine, but he himself in his own little group with Cheryl Cheryl, Carter Thompson and then Messiah Hongo. Just missed out at the end there, turning the straight into a bit of a corner, come the checker flag, finishing 12th and Caleb uh, Satiji just misses out, uh, retired due to injury. What does that do to the championship then? Well, Kanta Hamada, oh dear, we're having a bit of a problem with that one as well. Well, Kanta Hamada is definitely leading the championship. <laughs> and as you saw on the graphic <laughs> earlier, apologies for that. Obviously, uh, not quite uh, got First to round. see that. But uh, yeah, I think it's uh, Asman in second now, four points behind. Yes. I imagine it must be for Sato there in third. Although my maths hasn't been quite quick enough to immediately tell you what the gap might be. Uh, let's uh, let's just hope for the best. Well, and we know that Harrison Voigt will have 
moved up significantly from his position yesterday. Absolutely. There is the podium of the QMB Grand Prix of Qatar. And as you mentioned yesterday, you never forget any sort of win where you stand on top of a Grand Prix podium or even your first podium. Harrison Voigt. Oh, so maybe it was actually just emotion of relief and uh, exhilaration. Yeah, good word. Maybe. Don't be reticent. Uh. Be proud. <laughs> Hamada steps up into the podium. Not quite the place that he was yesterday. But take nothing away from your winner, the 18-year-old Sharifuddin Asman. A top, a Grand Prix podium in the Asia Talent Cup. For the second time? Yes. Not on home soil. It will feel probably just as sweet, though, I imagine. There is the third place trophy. Presented by 2009 250cc world champion Hiroshi Oyama. Potentially, possibly, maybe a future team boss to one of these lucky devils. And there is Asman raising that trophy high. You can see Hamada definitely not quite as happy as yesterday. No. <laughs> like I said, these guys super competitive, but a great race once again.